What's up, guys? And welcome to LP Tremors, where we talk all things violent horror. And once again, Brian Gavalier is joining me once again for the Friday the 13th. How's it going? I am doing wonderful. How are you doing, Tyler? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Unfortunately, um, you might be missing a certain Scottish man that's usually with us. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it tonight. So it's just going to be myself and the curly headed fuck. Thank God. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um so this is a continuation of the friday the 13th franchise um and tonight we are going to be reviewing in full friday the 13th part eight this is going to be jason takes manhattan or i should say jason takes a boat to manhattan uh this is coming out in 1988 following the new blood uh you have we have rob Hedden directing uh pretty much an unknown name i honestly don't know anything else he's been involved with but uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah rob Hedden is directing and um if you were to ask the typical friday the 13th fan usually this is the movie that really really gets a lot of shit this is the movie that really falls falls flat i'm talking it's in a ranking one to 12 it's going to be number 12 or number 11 at least yeah so this uh, this movie is hated by all fucking belief but um do we feel that way do we not or whatever ryan want to take it away so uh jason takes manhattan yep. to be honest i have always liked this movie um since i first started getting into this series i've always thought this one was pretty underrated and then watching it again today, I was just like, wow, there's like so much to talk about with this movie. <laughs> um, right from the beginning, you know, you have this like half-assed narration from this random like monotone dude, but it's definitely like trying to copy like the Warriors. Yes. Uh, you have that lady talking on the radio telling me about the city and stuff. And that's hilarious to me because it's like, they're doing it but it's like a bad version of it and like right. um i don't know that from the beginning to so many other things just makes me think this movie was honestly just made as a joke honestly or like a parody of the series um which we've kind of talked about some like meta stuff in the other movies i think this yeah. one's like totally meta um and i think it's like that both for um the acting it's so bad at times that it feels like it's on purpose it's so bad but it might just be that bad but like the acting is so hammy it's hilarious um obviously the censors butchered this movie there's barely any on-screen kills whatsoever in this movie mm. um most of them like you'll see the aftermath there's a couple you'll see like a little bit of stuff um i think uh the one that we see the most graphically is probably the boxing decapitation um which is pretty laughable um but i'm trying to think and like yeah it's just there's kind of a silly story with this one too but it's such a thoroughly enjoyable movie i think honestly like in terms of watchability, I think it's one of the most watchable Friday movies for me. Because not only is it like just a shitty slasher movie, it's also absolutely hilarious to watch. Um, so I'm like, I'm definitely pro Jason Takes Manhattan. Um, you know, I think, man, just like going off from the beginning, you know, you have like, we see those like we see like this these shots of new york which i think it's actually like canada i'm pretty sure it's, uh, yes vancouver yeah. yeah so just like this very like stereotypical like honestly like dateline nbc reagan administration look at like <laughs> new york all you just see is like a bunch of like homeless people and junkies and people just robbing each other that's all new york is to these people but this like solemn like foreigner level 
80s pop music over like making all kind of emotional and stuff um but we start off with these two teens and like they're kind of like getting all getting it on and shit um but yeah they get killed by jason um but the acting is so bad in that scene can we please address the elephant in the room with those two that fucking girl screaming when she's just about to get killed that's probably the best scream i've ever heard in my life that was oh yeah literally, that was literally comedy gold definitely well i love the guy when he's like dying he's like Argh. yeah <laughs> It's yeah. like the worst acting I've ever seen. And it's so he just strategically like grabs the wall so he could smear blood down it. And he's like yeah, really yeah. slow and stuff. And it's like, honestly, that along with so many other things make me think of Italian horror in this movie. This yeah. movie feels very like we want to be like an Italian horror movie. Um, some of the color palettes kind of remind me of Argento at times. Some yeah. of the actual like camera shots are very Italian looking, um, mm-hmm. nature of the kills and stuff. Um, and yes, yeah, so that's there, but the acting between those two is so bad. That girl is such a horrible actress. Um, I mean, her line delivery is hilarious. And so is the guy too. They're just, they ham it up big time. They start this movie off perfectly. Like we yeah. just know we're really in for a treat. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, as we go on, we meet more characters. We meet like um this teacher, Mr. McCulloch, who's a total prick. He's just yeah. total stick up the ass kind of yep. guy. Yeah, yep. his niece, Rennie, who's like um I don't know, maybe more likable than some of the other final girls we've had in the past couple movies. I'd say Um, so, yeah. Still kind of, like, weird, but, like, I I like her, honestly. Like, I think she's a good, likable character. I think her acting is mostly okay. Um, But, like, she's, like, she gets encouraged by her teacher to go on this boating trip, Mm -hmm. which her uh the high school is going on um i think it's the seniors specifically yeah um yeah, I think so. yeah but like so she goes even though she's afraid of the water and the uncle's really mad that she's going and mad at the teacher that she's letting her go and stuff but right. she still goes um we have a bunch of other students who i'm not I'll be completely honest, like, I don't really remember most of their names. Like, I know, like, the characters by face, but, like, yeah, we don't really care. I mean, there's, like, what's what's his name? Julius. He's, like, the boxer. Yeah. Um, yeah. JJ is, like, the guitar girl, you know? Mm-hmm. I think Sean is, like, the guy that she's kind of dating. Um, Rennie, Tamara is the one girl. Um sleeps with the teacher um, oh yeah you know, yeah yeah you know there's i remember some of them i think wayne's the nerdy kid the videographer. Uh, yeah i think you're right yeah 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 so like honestly like the characters in this are even though their names aren't super memorable i would say that they have more character than them than some of the other movies like i would agree i feel like they almost at times feel real even if the acting is a bit over the top, like I do feel like they're a bit more flushed out as characters. They at least kind of feel a bit more like um, actual characters rather than just bodies to kill. Uh, Some of them I wouldn't say are, but some of them you do kind of care about, or at least are interesting enough to like pay attention to. Um, But yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, we get to know them more. We get to see their like whole little relationships, their friendships and stuff. Um, and they're on this boat trip basically. And um, essentially Jason takes over the boat and the movie kind of becomes like under siege. And we obviously, we don't have um, Steven Seagal here to like ham it up, but we do have this cast of character to, just give us like this boat horror movie and like 
like I said, a lot of the kills are super tame here. Um, mm. Really not too much gore. Uh, we do have a little bit of nudity in the movie, not a whole lot. Like it's a pretty tame Friday the 13th movie overall. Agreed. But yeah. as I said in the last couple movies that were also kind of tamer, I don't need a Friday the 13th movie to be gory. No. I just need it to be an enjoyable movie. And honestly, I think this is a super watchable movie. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of weird fun elements to it. Um, I think that there is kind of a sense of terror at times. I mean, I think the boat element is fantastic because, I mean, you can't run away on a boat. No. the best you could do is jump off board like that's your best <laughs> bet honestly and like you're not so like it's very claustrophobic and like jason's on it in this movie he's quick he's strong um one thing i noticed about this with him too is i think this movie shows how calculated of a killer jason is or at least how much he's grown to be a calculated killer because i mean we have scenes where he's like walking through subways with ton of people he just walks past so many people he doesn't give a shit about this whole entire subway of people no. but he just um goes after the people he's specifically looking for yeah. and i think that's one thing that makes him a bit different than like michael myers because if it was michael myers he would have probably just killed everybody that was on that subway Agreed, whereas yeah. jason's just specifically on his mission yeah right. um which adds honestly a kind of darkness to him but we also do see him so many opportunities where he could kill rennie but he doesn't um i mean there's a scene where she's in like that alley in new york because yeah we eventually do get to new york um they end up taking a lifeboat there after Jason infiltrates and the boat catches on fire and stuff. Yeah. Sorry to jump ahead, but like, um, yeah, they do end up getting to New York and there's some debacle there. You know, Rennie gets kidnapped by these like homeless junkie dudes yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And um, Jason kills both of them, but he doesn't even go after Rennie at that moment. So yeah. it's like, that's almost a weird little thing too it's almost like he knows she needs to be the final girl so oh i can't kill her yet or i can't even try to kill her yet she's gonna be the final girl the movie feels very self-aware in that kind of way um and i don't know like yeah i just i feel like once we get to new york too i think it is very satisfying it's not super long it's maybe no 25 minutes yeah it's actually. probably yeah a little less than the last half hour of the movie but it feels effective mm, i yeah, think this absolutely. is the way the movie was meant to be i don't think i really wanted a whole movie of jason in new york i think the whole journey of getting there and like the whole boat thing makes it all the more interesting and also makes those new york scenes more effective i mean right it's not really well done like i said it's a very like stereotypical almost kind of like um insensitive look at new york but i think that just adds to like the meta kind of parody element of it too it's just like it's it's not even really trying to be a very good movie oh, but yeah. one thing i do have to say is really well done i, I think that the movie is very well shot i think there's a lot of good camera work i also mm -hmm. think it's very well lit and it's overall a very aesthetically pleasing movie it looks very professionally done yeah yeah the production value is very strong in this movie definitely yeah yeah i think it looks awesome honestly and i enjoy that almost very thoroughly um but like i don't know i think um anything negative um i do think the whole rennie's story is kind of stupid um like her like uncle like throwing her in the water and then she gets pulled under by jason like that shit's kind of stupid honestly and bit. cheesy um and the baby i mean the kid version of jason looks terrible in this oh, movie yeah. yeah he looks like a like 
he looks like a pickled pig or something like you know oh, it's yeah. like what the fuck is this thing um but i think that um the movie was supposed to be like the last friday movie when they it was coming out that was what it was they right. were trying to tie the whole thing together so right. i think they were kind of trying to bring us back to where jason was at the beginning so i think that stuff's fine but it is kind of stupid but i mean it's a friday at 13th movie so i'm not looking for like perfect story points no, um no. i think it's still enjoyable um yeah. and i mean there's some funny shit in this movie like um i just <laughs> school's out motherfucker <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i like julius he's a funny character yes. i mean when he's yeah. when he's punching jason like 65 times and he's just slowly getting tired and then jason just bops his shot. head off yeah take your best shot motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing um i you know i like I like that you have like the random guitar playing girl, like just yeah. all this stupid stuff. Um, just random cocaine use, like, yeah, right, you know, right. getting caught and then trying to bang the teacher to get out of trouble. Like, it's like this movie's just so wrong in every way, and I oh love it. Yeah, it's, yep. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, like. I think the special effects in this one are pretty bad, honestly. Um, even this, like the gore we see on screen, the blood looks extremely fake in comparison to some of the other movies. I think right, it's definitely, right. I mean, they don't even attempt to make it look like you have actual contact in the kills. Like there's times where like, you'll see Jason like bash somebody, but like it doesn't even look like he remotely made contact with the right. person. It's like mostly off screen, but you could tell like the direction he swings isn't even near the person. So like that kind of stuff is very badly done, but it's yeah. like, it's kind of fine. Honestly, it's kind of funny. It's kind of cheesy. Um, so overall, I really, I'm a fan of this movie. I've always been a fan. I think that it's misunderstood. I think people want, I don't know why they'd want something more serious or expect something more serious because I mean, we've had like five, six and seven, which are all fucking hilarious movies. Um, and the series is obviously not taking itself serious anymore. Um, and yeah, they're not in Manhattan the whole time, but that's totally fine. Like, honestly, the movie would have been boring if it was just an hour and a half of what we actually got in the Manhattan scenes. I like, agree. Yeah. It would get I old. think it, yeah, we get a variety. So I, I think this is an awesome one. It's honestly like in this rewatch of the movies, this has one, been one of my favorite rewatches so nice. far. Um, I mean, like as a movie, I'm going to give it like a six out of 10. But as a Friday movie, I'm going to give it like an eight. I really eight, like okay. this nice i think it's one of the best ones of the series honestly like that we've talked yeah. about so far yeah. i mean it's not better than like two four six um but i'd probably watch it over three honestly and yeah. definitely over seven i don't know about over five they're about tied for me those two right right um and I'd probably watch it over part one at this point, honestly. Holy shit. Okay. It's more it's more fun at least, I'll yeah. say. Like it's not a better movie, but it's more fun and more wacky and more comedic, I would say. Um yeah. I just like funny Friday the thirteenth. I like that honestly the series kind of became like the meta horror series before people were even really thinking of being like the meta series, like you know, this is, it was kind of ahead of a game, like just going like almost a fully comedic route, honestly. Right, I like right. that about it. Yeah. So I'm a nice. fan. I'm going to go eight in terms of the Friday the 13th movies. Holy shit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. I kind of was not expecting that, but <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Yeah. So 
Jason takes a boat ride to Manhattan. This this movie. Hmm, I fucking love this movie. <laughs> I love this movie. <laughs> This is such a very, very self-aware Friday the Thirteenth movie, and I just fucking love it. it oh, this yeah. is this is this is the perfect representation of what a horror comedy should be. I mean, <laughs> going from that opening scene with that that couple we just mentioned, that the acting ability is priceless. You, you can't make that up. But then the rest of the movie, it's like um, I don't see. There are a few instances where there is a lot of bad acting, but overall, I think the re- most of the cast is pretty good. Oh yeah. I mean, they're not amazing. They're not. <laughs> they're not like Jodie Foster, or they're not going to be anything really noteworthy. But it's good. It's not bad. It's believable. Like um, you have Rennie as our final girl and she is i agree with you she's a very likable final girl very realistic i would say um and then you have her have that guy sean which is kind of her her soon-to-be boyfriend they're kind of talking and then they kind of get together it's like a romantic comedy of a friday the 13th movie but um yeah so you have you have sean and he's pretty good too um he's not very i don't think he's very memorable he's he's not the most memorable in the whole movie but he's there and he's good you know he doesn't piss me off whenever he's on camera he's not like a scumbag he's not a scumbag no no like for example like the guy in part seven like he just bored the fuck out of me and then (laughs) (laughs) i don't know so yeah this is a this movie is a gigantic step up from part seven for sure like um I when I when I was rewatching part seven, I forgot how much I fucking hated it. This movie, I forgot how much I loved it. It's such a fun ride. I oh, yeah. and, and another thing going over, you know, the cast members, I she is in a very short brief of the movie. I really, really love that guitar girl. What's her name? Like, oh yeah. JJ. JJ. Yeah, JJ. Yeah. Yeah, she. I. I don't know. She kind of. She was there for like some comedic relief. She's like she's trying to make a music video on the boat or something like that with, <laughs> with like a Walkman and her flying V. Like. <laughs> yeah. Like and you have that like nerdy kid. I, I forgot his name too. Um, Wayne, I think. Wayne. Yeah, Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, that kid with the with the camera. He was literally comedy gold. You know, he was like recording. JJ do her thing. And then, like, later on, you, when um, the other girl was trying to bang the teacher, he sneaks into the, <laughs> and sneaks into the room with the camera. I thought that was yeah, great. Definitely. Um, yeah. But, um, nope. yeah, actually, and speaking of the teacher, what was his name again? I can't even Mr. Remember. McCulloch. Mr. McCulloch, yeah. Yeah, he is a certified douchebag. He, he reminds me a lot of, um, of the doctor from Part 7. In a lot of I ways. think they were basically supposed to be the same character. I could, yeah, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. honestly, very similar things, but like trying to kind of hide why the girl's fucked up. Like, right, you know? right, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So hit him, like he is, he is a character where he didn't annoy the fuck out of me. Um, he was there to be that douchebag. Uh, and I think he plays that douchebag part very, very well. But he's not to the point where he's pissing me off. He, again, he's not like Shelly bad, where I just want to blow my brains out every time I see that curly-headed fuck. But um, doc, <laughs> Mr. McCulloch, he is, he, he's enjoyable. He's enjoyable. I don't really have too much of an issue with him. Another part of the movie I really like involving the cast is... Um, is those two girls like the girl that was trying to bang the teacher and then her friend i think they had like a really good chemistry and really good relationship and um it, i kind of it's kind of fucked up but i kind of laughed my ass off when because the girl who like tries to bang the teacher she's kind of like your t- stereotypical mean blonde girl 
and she accidentally pushes R- Rennie overboard and she falls into the water. I thought that was a, I, I, it's fucked up. I kind of laughed my ass off. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that was, so that was, a, that was a pretty funny. So, so what I'm really trying to say is this movie is not, it's very self aware. It's not taking anything seriously. And I think, Ryan, you said it perfectly. This is like a parody version of a Friday the 13th movie. I think it is. I really, I can't in my mind think that they made this movie by accident. I really can't. It it doesn't, too much of what they did shows it was intentional between having the Warriors basically like intro and like, you know, just all the weird shit. Like it, Right, it has right. to be real. Right, right. So yeah, uh, so as far as the other cast members go, I don't think there's any others that are really extremely memorable. So you have those two girls I just mentioned. I thought they had a really cool chemistry. Granny as a final girl, extremely likable. Mr. McCulloch, as much of as as much of an asshole as he really is, is enjoyable to watch. Um, but other than that, um, there's just characters that are just kind of there to be there just to be kill bait basically um i need to talk about kane hodder as well i think kane yes. hodder steps it up big time in this mm-hmm. movie um he he is having a lot more fun with the role you feel more of those kane hodder isms really come out like this is really the start of like his breathing thing and um like his like little like instances where he's just fucking with people like um you have that iconic scene where he's walking around Manhattan and, you know, that those like kind of sort of parody version of gang members, they yell, start yelling at him, making fun of him. And um, he looks at these gang members and takes off his mask. So they start running for the hills. I thought that was great. So you have oh, those yeah. little Kane Hodders and he seems like he's having a lot more fun with the role. And he is definitely is making much more of a presence than he did in seven for sure. Like I didn't think he was too bad in seven, but he really steps it up in Manhattan. I thought he was great. I thought he was great in seven. I think one thing about him though, in this one is he's also a lot more expressive. Yeah. You see him do those little like. Right, right, right. Head cocks and stuff. And it's like. You can almost kind of see behind the mask with Jason. It's yeah. kind of weird. Like we see a little bit more of how his mind works. Yeah. Rather than him just being this like brainless and dumb killer. He becomes pretty smart in these movies. No, he does. He definitely does. And like hence kind of why I said, like, this is kind of like um he's really having fun with this role. You he's really expressing those pain hotterisms that we'll see in Jason Goes to Hell and um, Jason X. But uh, yeah, so he's... Kane Hodder, I really can't say anything bad about his performance. I think he does a fantastic job with Manhattan. And also the look of Jason, I really like as well. This is... um, Like, if you have looked at different reviews for this movie, whether it's on YouTube or whether you've looked up these reviews online, I've seen multiple reviews that say that the look of Jason is terrible. Like Jason's kind of wet. He's like, he just looks disgusting, but I love the look of Jason. Like I love the wet look of Jason. He looks very grimy and gross. Like I, the look of Jason is kind of, is pretty badass. I, yeah, I think the one thing I will say that I don't love about him in this one is I feel like um, some of the camera angles, a lot of the movie makes him seem larger than life, but then there's moments where he does just look like this like normal size dude, (laughs) Um, which is especially like his shoulders. It's like, oh, he's just a normal person. So sometimes there's little things like that. But you said something about the water, by the way. How badass is it? they like get stuck in the sewers at the end with the toxic waste. So not yes. only do they have Jason, they also are now on a time crunch because of this toxic waste that raises the stakes so much. That raises the stakes big time. Absolutely. 
yeah that yeah. ending scene was pretty pretty intense it was short but it was pretty intense definitely um but yeah um as far as negatives go you ryan you mentioned this and you nailed it Rennie's as far as she is a very likable final girl i really liked her a lot but her story was kind of it's kind of like painted on it felt like very last minute almost and she keeps getting these flashbacks of young jason that didn't really make any sense um i get what they were doing it's something that definitely didn't need to be there i'll just put it that way yeah it just it's seems like, like jason wanted a friend and he was just yeah, pulling her into yeah. the water like no way <laughs> right right so yeah you have these little flashbacks that just didn't really need to be there that didn't make too much sense while i get what what they were trying to do i don't think they really did that very well um kills you kind of mentioned it it's kind of like you see a lot of the kills you see the aftermath of the kill or it's very off camera kind of similar to seven but the kills you do see are actually really good for example the decapitation kill with the boxer take your best shot motherfucker Fucker. <laughs> like, that was perfect i love that scene to death um and that has much heat as this movie gets people will look at that scene and will admittedly say that is one of the best jason kills you'll ever see so and rightfully so it's just a badass kill it's fucking hilarious but it's also pretty badass as well um i really like the kill um with that stereotypical blonde mean girl in the bathroom where um jason he walks in he punches the window or punches the mirror grabs a glass and just stabs her that was pretty badass um i like very the diner. italian very very italian yeah the dario argento comparison that you nailed that one that was it's i can i easily see where you're coming from with that yeah <laughs> but yeah um i really like the diner scene as well you know, Sean and Randy run into this diner, and then you have this waitress that just does not give a shit whatsoever. Oh, yeah, uh, we need to call the cops. We need a maniac chasing after us. Yeah, there's a phone over there, but it's not working. <laughs> but he's trying to kill us. <laughs> welcome to New York. Welcome, to, welcome to New York. <laughs> 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 then Jason, Jason barges in the door. Randy and Sean just book it, and... <laughs> He just calls all. You have this cook running over towards Jason, giving him shit. He gets thrown across the room and smashes his head on a window. That was great. But yeah, that oh, diner yeah. scene, that diner scene was pretty cool. And then, but yeah, so you get a bunch of these weird, cool little scenes. It's just comedic gold. It's really just comedic gold when you really break it down. This is one of the, easily the most, or one of the most self aware Friday the 13th you'll ever see. Is it um, bad that I laughed really hard when when Rennie crashed the car? Oh, <laughs> they're my like God, slowed. Yeah. <laughs> they're yes. like slow down, and then she's yeah. just like booking it. Has the little hallucination, crashes in the car, blows up. She realizes the teacher's still in it. She's like, right, right. Oh my <laughs> God, so fucking good. And um, it's funny. And speaking of the teacher, Mr. McCulloch. I thought his kill was pretty awesome too. Going back to my positives a little bit, where Jason grabs Mr. McCulloch and dumps him into that acid barrel. That's so good. That was badass. That was badass. Dude, that's so brutal. Cause it's yeah. like, it's like almost a little bit of once again, Jason is kind of self aware. Like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, you, you thought it was funny to drown this little girl. Well, guess what I'm going to do to it's you? Wonderful. Like, right. You know, right. like, it's pretty uh it's pretty mean spirited and awesome, honestly. Right, right. Absolutely, yeah, I definitely couldn't agree more. Yeah, but that acid kill was fucking great. And um and as far as the third act goes, I have mixed feelings about it. Um it is a very short third act, but it was a very effective third act. Uh Jason, you know, um Renny throwing the acid at um at Jason. Jason's face is burning, which I got to say, Jason looked terrible at that part. Like, it just looks so freaking fake. He looks like <laughs> I, a garbage pail kid. It, 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 he looks like a garbage pail kid, exactly. 
like what, like what the fuck are they doing but anyways <laughs> but overall that was kind of that was pretty cool but jason's face that was just dumb but uh anyway you get to the third act where that happens and and then the water starts rushing over at jason and jason drowns and then this is the scene that i that again just did not need to be there another scene with young jason the last scene with young jason where he's in the fetal position just normal looking kid by the way this is a normal looking kid this isn't you know mentally disabled jason this isn't fucked up jason this is just a normal (laughs) normal looking kid in the fetal position just laying there i'm like why just end it there and end it where jason drowns they walk up and live happily ever after. Why did you? That was one scene that just did not need to be there. Like I said, I think once again, because I was watching the behind the scenes, um, and the director said he was signed on to wrap up this series. Right. Yeah. Um, obviously, New Line picked it back up for part nine, but right. I think the whole thing was supposed to be like the toxic waste is the one thing that just returned Jason to what he was, just this little boy yeah. that drowned. Like, but it's so so misguided and dumb. Very, mis- very, very misguided. Um, but then you that scene ends, and they are, and this is this was actually kind of cool, but it was cool, but it was like I don't know, it was um. Again, it's something I have mixed feelings about. Like, literally, right at the end, right before the credits roll, it's literally a callback to Friday the 13th Part 2 with that dog. You know, like, remember in Part 2 where Paul and Jenny were in that little house and yep. and their dog, like, they're getting ready. They think Jason's back at the door and, you know, Paul opens the door and the dog starts running at, running in towards Jenny. They're doing literally a callback to that scene, where yeah, where um, where Sean and Rennie are just standing there on the sidewalk, and they hear something behind them, and you know the music, suspenseful music starts coming up, and you start hearing these footsteps, and then their dog is here. The dog is back, so it's kind of like a callback to Friday Part Two, but that was just kind of unnecessary. <laughs> I do think it's weird that they did that though, because like, um, because, um, like, it is almost kind of like saying, yeah, this time we're gonna see this dog, but Jason won't be back. This means that the series is over. I can see so that. Yeah, that's why I feel like this movie had to be intentional because like why would they do a callback like that without knowing what the hell they're doing like it's like it's it's weird right 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 yeah no I I definitely agree it is weird it's it's just a weird situation but uh another actually just one more negative I have to point out and this is kind of going back to the this is kind of like a parody of Friday the 13th you have a lit a literal literal parody version of crazy ralph in here that just mm-hmm. did not need to be there like this guy he pissed me off like it was he was just so unnecessary he was ve- an extremely watered down crazy ralph and i've mentioned it's kind of funny yeah i get what they were doing it's, it's just a parody like it didn't need to be there and uh, <laughs> I know I mentioned in our first Friday the 13th review for 1980 and for part two, I mentioned how much I love Crazy Ralph. This is just an abomination. <laughs> like This guy, he was, I know what they were doing. This is definitely a parody of Crazy Ralph. That's exactly what their thought process was. It, definitely. It couldn't have not been, right? But yeah. yeah oh, so overall, that, those are my thoughts on Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. Um, again, we're on a boat for literally an hour. And then about half hour before the movie ends, 25 minutes, where mi- it's like a mixed bag between Vancouver and New York City. I think it was like a budget thing. Because I, if you watch... Um, if you watch Crystal Lake Memories, the full discography... I mean, the full documentary... 
of the Friday 13th series, they actually go into detail about that. And they have mentioned in full with Jason Takes Manhattan that it was literally just because of budgetary restraints. They couldn't film in New York City. It, it was just a big budget issue. So that's pretty much the biggest reason why they were on the boat half the time and a little bit in Vancouver. But um, I love the boat. I absolutely love the boat. <laughs> Overall, this is a very watchable Friday 13th movie. It falls into the so bad that's good category at times, but it's just very watchable. It's very fun. As far as movies go, I'm going to probably give this Friday the 13th movies. I, I'm probably going to echo you, Ryan. I'll probably say it's about an eight because I do see myself rewatching this quite a bit. As far as an actual movie goes, I'm probably going to say this is probably like uh, five, probably, because it's yeah. really not a good movie. It really falls into the so bad that's good. Yes and no. I feel like there's more to it than meets the eye. Like I feel like it's so so weird and uncanny that it I have trouble calling it bad because I feel like it was like a weird I feel like they actually kind of tried with this movie I can see that yeah 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 I don't know it's um it's a very watchable Friday 13th so you're gonna have a blast watching this movie again I sound like a broken record because I've said this literally in every single review you can't take these movies seriously you really can't you the, mo the second you take these movies seriously, and this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, you, there's a little glimpse of seriousness. <laughs> you're going to be out. The, the, you're going to think this is the biggest pile of shit you're, you'll ever see in your life. So definitely take this with a grain of salt. Very watchable, very funny. It's just comedy gold. <laughs> But uh, there you go. The, that is our full review of Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. Ryan, is there anything you want to add before or anything you forgot? Just go watch this movie, yeah. honestly. Like I said, I've never disliked this movie. I've always actively defended it, no matter how much it gets shit on. Like This movie is yeah. so much fun, and it it's way better than it gets credit for, honestly. So just I go agree. give it a try. Just give it a shot give it a shot absolutely so yeah that is our full review definitely let us know in the comments what you think of friday the 13th part eight or the whole franchise in general we'd love to read them um you see the subscribe button do whatever the fuck you want um ryan you have a youtube channel ryan's final destination anything going on on your side um not at the moment just kind of a little bit of a chill December, we'll say. But um, yeah. yeah, Queen will be coming back in January. There you go. Yeah, nice. So yeah, check out Ryan's Vinyl Destination. I Again, the channel is always linked in the description below. So check the description below. You're, you are watching LP Tremors. And there's a few things in the works. So um, if you have been following... LP Tremors, you probably notice a certain new series on the channel. It is a full Iron Maiden discography review series uh, with my buddy Peter Jones. Me and him are going over every single studio Iron Maiden record from the first record all the way to Senjutsu. It's been an absolute blast. We have two videos out right now. Um, first one being Iron Maiden self-titled, second one being Killers. They're out now, so definitely give those a shot. Um, stay tuned for more Friday the 13th. Um, hopefully, Davey will be back and back soon. So, um, yeah, fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> but we will be back for Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, that's going to be in about two weeks from now. Um, we'll probably say two weeks from now. And that's just about it. Oh, also, there's a few solo stuff in the works coming on my end as well. I mean, it's been for fucking ever since I've done a solo project on this channel. So definitely refreshing to be alone on the camera. Um, I actually did. There is a video out right now. 
I just put it out today. It is a um, it's I kind of go into detail about how vinyl records or collecting vinyl records changed my life. So definitely check that out. That is literally out right now. I posted it. I think I posted some sometime around this morning. So definitely give that a shot. Another solo project I'm doing is a beginner's guide to Aerosmith. So I'm going to be going over five records that I would give to a non-fan and go into detail on why I would give these certain five records to that fan or somebody, something like that. Um, another solo thing I'm going to be doing that's going to be in the works is a, um, I'm going to be listing 10 records that were released in 2022 that I believe are the best. So I'm just going to be going over 10 records that were released on in this year, 2022. Since this year is coming to a wrap, I thought it would be cool to just do 10 records and discuss them. So that's going to be coming out real soon. But other than that, stay tuned. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Ryan, is there any closing remarks, anything you want to add? Thanks for having me on, Tyler. And it was a pleasure. I think, I think we do better as a duo. I'm pretty, yeah, yeah, fuck Davey. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, I'm blocking him. I'm blocking him right now as we speak. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. I thank you guys so much for sticking out with us. Stay tuned for more Friday the 13th. We're going to be going over Jason Goes to Hell, as I said. And as always, stay metal, stay scared. Bye, guys.